you're going into the next phase of your life, and that's exciting. And when I think, thought about it during the week, what can I, what can I, what can I leave you with? I'm going to leave you with the following words. It says, it's a song that John Denver wrote. It says the following, to sail on a dream on a crystal clear ocean, to ride in the crest of the wild raging storm, to work in the service of life and the living, in search for the answers to the questions unknown. It's a song about a boat. So this boat sailed on the ocean, looking how it can save the ocean, what can be done to, to help sea life, etc., etc. And then John Denver wrote the song, and it was one of his most famous, famous uh, songs in the world. So it's a dream he had. All of you, all of us got a dream. You just got to need to go and follow that dream. You know, a simple dream like, it, if you can imagine, you say to your friends, I'm going to write a song about a boat. My first reaction was, yes, like, yeah, you know, a boat. But he did it, and it became one of his most famous songs. So dreams are so big. Dreams are there to, to go and achieve it. Live out your dreams, whatever that dream might be. Look, I don't need to say to you that you're clever, because you are very clever. Congratulations. Good luck with your dreams. And I want to ask you, please come back. Come and tell us your life story in 10 years' time, in 15 years' time. Tell us what you achieved with your life. We'd love to hear from you. Good luck for your future, and once again, well done. To our matric teachers and our teachers that's here, well done to you too. The work that we've put in the lives of kids, you can't buy it. You can't steal it. It means a lot to them. And that's why we are in this profession, because we can change lives. That's why I became a teacher. If it's in a sport field or an academic field, we've got the power to invest in people. And there's nothing more satisfying to invest in people. And when kids come back and they say, thank you, sir. Thank you for what you've done. Bernice, can I please ask you to come and open for us for prayer? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm then going to ask our executive head, Mr. Jan van Hensburg, to say a few words. When that's done, we're going to have a look at the video, and then the proceedings are going to start. Thank you, Bernice. Good morning, everyone. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for blessing us with the minds. Thank you for giving our kids strength. Thank you for giving us our teachers strength. And also thank you for giving the leadership, the management of the school strength. Be with us today as we celebrate. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bernice. I'm going to ask Mr. Jans for to come forward. When he's done and the proceedings are starting, please help yourselves with the uh, treats on the table. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Freak. Good morning to everybody. Um, so lovely to see the teachers. I know um, quite a few of our learners and parents are not here today. They already had varsity. Um, I think some stayed behind for a couple of days or came back for this special event. Um, this morning I said to my wife, uh, normally by 6 o'clock we would already be on a bus and we would be on our way to Joburg for this function. We usually have it at Empress. I know I challenged the grade 12s and said, listen, come 6 March, we're on the bus, three buses full, and we're going to go there. Um, obviously, things have changed um, over that time. But it's lovely for me to, to have the teachers and, and the staff and even our future um, brilliant performance sitting here today, joining, joining the event. That's, that's one thing. It's a big event. When, when we usually go, it's all over the country. People fly in, 300 learners um, involved. So they only invite the essential, in, um, essentials. But I always know the teachers and everybody involved should be there to see that great moment. So it's so nice that, that we can have it to um, everybody involved today. So I don't, I'm not going to have a big speech. We've got um, the official that will still be part, so it's a national event. We have the same setup. We also got a top 10 today, so our learners can see how that they fare or compare against the rest of the country. I just want to say thank you to every teacher, every parent, and every grade 12 learner. You know, the year started, I see, I think it's yesterday or the day before, it was exactly a year when COVID landed on our shores. Um, I can't believe a year ago, I know exactly where I was when um, they started announcing the president's going to speak the Sunday evening. 
and two days later or three days later, the schools were closed down and we went, two weeks later, we went into a hard lockdown. So um, I think we have achieved so much as, as a country and as a school and especially you guys as, as grade 12 learners to, to go through that uncertainty. I know with us as staff, what's going to happen is, are we going to open again? I mean, it was so unknown to everybody. And when, when the learners came back, is there going to be a metric? I personally had to go and speak to quite a few of the classes to say, it's going to happen. The timelines have been put in place. And mind shift, I could see the learners had to, to change their mind. Say, listen, it's going to happen. We now need to get in gear. We're going to write a metric exam, and we are needing, or we are going to have to complete it as every other year. So um, for us to be here today and to achieve what we have achieved or what you have achieved um, is amazing. I used the word resilient during your prize giving year at school. It's to recover quickly. When the results came out two weeks ago, I remember saying, I was, I was training the morning, and the whole time, it was an hour, but the whole, my mind couldn't, couldn't get away from what's going to happen, what's the results going to be that night. And the whole time, I wanted to be what we envisioned it to be, 365 years, or days um, in the past, so a year ago. Because if everything was 100% past, we would have known it was unreal. If the marks were terrible, yeah, then... We didn't pull it through. But it, for us, it was normal. The results was there. I said from day one, we're going to have at least 13 learners at this event, or at best 18. That's normal. We ended up with 16. So we were smack in the middle of that. So that, that, that means that everybody have had to put in the effort they normally had to do besides the normal or the abnormal of the lockdown and everything that it brought in. Um, the anxiety. I mean, I know how many grade 12 learners left this campus where they were anxious. They got tested. It was negative, but they were very anxious because what's going to happen? My friend got sick and this, this, and that. Um, so out of all of this, we are here today. And a year later, we're getting ready for the next, next group. And as Freak is saying, is it's, we as teachers, we have these events, but I think in life, we're the ones standing there in the shadows and clapping hands are feeling very proud of what our learners have achieved. Um, I myself, I can, I can name to you the teachers that have influenced, good or bad. Um, I've had bosses, managers, where I can, I've learned a lot from them, and they were terrible, but I know what not to do. So anything in life, there's, there's always areas where, where you can learn. So, um, and that's for us as a teacher. If you've got that where I can learn from somebody and I'm happy to see somebody to go on in life, and although never ever you maybe speak to that person again, you know what influence or what was your involvement in that person, and that is what is making that special um, occasion. So... Um, where you go into life, see talent is here and Pule is here and Grishma and all the other learners that is already at Varsity. I spoke to most of them two weeks ago personally. Um, I know they're going forward and going to achieve great things. Learners, when they leave this school, it's not something that I wish. It's something that I know. When they leave this school and they are going to take on medicine, actual sciences, Whatever incredible, difficult degree they are attempting, they are doing very well. Um, that's just how it is. We have the motto here, work to achieve. We're a big school. And over the last three, four years, we have worked very, very hard not to be just big, but to be big and to care as well for the learners, for the staff, and to have mutual respect and caring between everybody. Um, because at the end of the day, that's what life should be. We should not be going through life and stepping on people. When we get ahead, somebody supported us to get there. So for me, parents that are sitting here, 
I know you supported your children. To be where they are now, it takes a lot of support. Sometimes they don't feel it. It's, I, have it I have it with my parents and with my children as well. You know, there's, there's some friction sometimes because you want them to be better. When my children get home and they say to me they get 90 or 92, I said, but what happened to the other 8%? And then my wife gets upset. I said, but I need to push them. I need to tell them that 100 is the standard. And if you miss it, it's fine. I'll still say congratulations. But when you, when you go into that exam room, when you are going into a theater, Uli says he's going to be a surgeon one day. So I know when he steps into that theater 10 years from now, he goes for 100%. He wants that patient to be alive and to be well when they go out there. Because if a person goes into a theater and says, let's go for a 40, huh? um, it's not going to turn out well for the person on the table. So, and it starts now. It starts in the classroom where that is the attitude or when you're an accountant or the next thing or the next thing or the next thing. Is you need to be 100% because of lives depend on you. And don't throw away. I mean, we've seen businesses fail over the past year. Because I know when lockdown struck, I know that there's businesses that's living day to day. Because they, they are maybe overextended or this or that. And that's the people in the business that, that, that everybody is relying on them. So that's where the 100% comes in. And for you guys sitting here um, and our future top achievers, spread the word with your friends. Let's go 100%. Because when we leave school and we're going into the workplace, the world relies on us 100% every single time. So thank you very much to every person that involved. Um, and hopefully you have thanked every person that, that gave you that edge where you were today. We were born with some talents, but to get there, it's a lot of work. If you go past 75%, on a, a report mark means you have worked extremely hard. 75% maybe you come with a lot of raw talent and, and you pay attention, but everything past that, you have worked extremely hard. So from my side, thank you very much. Congratulations um, in life. Go succeed. I know you will. Come say hello. There's nothing better when to receive those learners back. The faces never go away. 20 years later, you still remember the face. The names maybe will go out, um, but the faces always stay with us, and it's really nice to see this is what has been achieved in life. Um, thank you very much. We're going to go now over to, to the official awards where we will have Bongani um, running the show for us. He's going to have a, a speech, and then we'll have the CEO of Kiro, Andres Greilen, as well as Andre Pollard, who is the head of the curriculum um, development team of Kiro. They're going to have a, um, a few um, words to share with us and wisdoms, and then we will go to the official awards. Thank you. Good morning, Kiro! My name is Bongani Bingwa, and it really is my great pleasure to be your host and speaker as we honor the class of 2020. I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled to be speaking to you. This is my fifth year doing this. And uh, really thank you to the Kuro leadership team for inviting me to come and speak once again. Normally, as you know, we would be at a gala function at Emperor's Palace. It would be full of glitz, it would be full of glamour. But obviously due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the current lockdown restrictions in South Africa, we simply could not take the chance. Uh, and so we were left with no choice but to cancel our annual event at Emperor's Palace. But nonetheless, we are still going to recognize an extraordinary crop of learners, an extraordinary group of young people who against all the odds have done as well as we would have expected, if not even better. So around Kuro schools around South Africa right now on this day, uh, many of you are watching this pre-recorded broadcast to celebrate exactly that. And it's just absolutely fantastic to be able to do it. 
Uh, but before we do anything else, let me acknowledge the leadership team at Curo, the executive heads, the management, everybody who is a part of really keeping this machine well-oiled in terms of producing South Africa's future leaders. But I also want to welcome all of you, class of 2020. You are the reason we are doing this. You are the reason we are here. And we really, really want to once again applaud you and we want to celebrate you. Well done for all your achievements. But what also makes this year special is that we're not only watching this uh, pre-recorded broadcast at various Curo schools around the country, in fact, around the region, but we're also streaming this on Facebook, on a number of social media platforms. And that's really been the story of 2020, has it not? We've been able uh, to live stream uh, so much of what we've been able to do both in the school environment, but even outside. And some of those moments are all over Facebook, they're all over Instagram, and that is the new world in which we live. So yes, we may not all be in the same room right at this moment, but in a sense, we are more together than ever before. So I want to extend a special welcome then to all our NSC and our IEB learners and really once again congratulate you on the path that you've been through to get to your final exams because all of this is in honour of you. But also to the teachers, to the caregivers, to the parents, the aunties, the uncles, the grandparents, whoever you are in the life of the class of 2020, this is for you too. Without any further ado then, I'm now going to invite Mr. Andres Hreiling, the CEO of uh, the Curo Group, who will come and do a short presentation and a word of welcome. Kiro friends, family, and most importantly, the class of 2020. Under normal circumstances, in a normal world, I would have greeted you in a normal manner at the beginning of a normal year. But 2020 taught each one of us that normal, like as so many other things, is not in our control. You, the class of 2020, are a special group. Your matric year was not in your control. Nothing about it was normal either. Trust me, I know. I am the proud father of a 2020 matriculant. A young woman sitting right here with all of you. Last year I saw her battle daily. She too wanted to normalize the abnormal, to make a matric year as memorable as possible. It was not easy, believe me, but here we are. And in the words of our great leader Nelson Mandela, I say to you, it always seems impossible until it is done. There are four things that I've tried to teach my children and their friends about control. A lesson someone taught me years ago. Try to control what you think. Be the CEO of your brain. Ask me, being a CEO is not easy. But as soon as you realize that your thoughts are your thoughts, things get better. Nobody is going to feel wonderful if they entertain the thought that they are a failure and boring. Soon others will doubt you and you will become a boring failure. Happiness and achievement depends on your attitude. Grab opportunities, be positive, talk to everyone you can, learn when you get the chance and value your family. Don't be the victim. Try it, think yourself wonderful. Sitting here, you all have every reason to think just that. In the words of one of my heroes, Steve Jobs, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. My second thought, control what you say. I often land myself in trouble as I speak my mind. Some things need to be left unsaid. Learning to control what you say is a slow and painful process. Those of you who know your Bible will know that there are a lot of stories of people remaining silent. Jesus remained silent in front of his accusers. It was not the time to lay out the facts of the matter and it probably would not have done any good either. Each day you say many words. Think what you say. Focus on positive words. 
Because no matter what people tell you, words and ideas can change the world. In the words of Robin Williams, things go wrong every day for everyone. The difference is how you respond. Life is an echo. What you send out comes back. That is true for positive and negative thoughts. My third view on self-control is control what you look at. I'm not going to pretend that I know what is going on on Instagram, TikTok, Ripsmash, YouTube or Byte. I don't. I am at the age now where I know my time is precious and I only look at things that will add value and not land me in trouble. Try it. Control what you look at. You will be surprised at what else there is in the world. Respect yourself. Be careful what goes into your body and your mind. Just as what you eat is what you are, what you think is what you become. Look for opportunities to make a difference. My last point on self-control. Control where you go. For a while last year, we all walked the path of bedrooms, kitchens and bathrooms. That is where we went day in and day out. But now the world awaits. Although you might need to sit tight until 2023 before you wander abroad again. Whether you go, ask yourself whether your destination will be worth it. You all have different roads to walk in life. And as you take that first step, which you surely must do, make it confidently firm in your belief that you can make a positive contribution wherever your road takes you. Be true to yourself, honestly and kindly. The world needs good people. Remember, you do not have to have it all figured out right now. Plan, do, review, repeat, but keep moving. That is the important bit. Instead of you over planning and trying to know the outcome before you start, it is more important to take the first step into the unknown. In the words of Dory, the little fish in the movie Nemo just keep on swimming. For you, just keep on moving. Class of 2020, my message is simple. In a world that is out of control, practice self-control. It's not what you say to everyone else that determines your life. It's what you whisper to yourself that has the greatest power. To our parents, thank you for entrusting us with your most precious children. I know they will continue to make us proud. And finally to the class of 2020, it was an honor to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Now let me invite uh, Mr. Andre Pollard, who is of course the executive for curriculum at Curo. He will do a short speech for the class of 2020. Learners, teachers, parents, heads of high schools and executive heads. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the CCMD, Kiru Curriculum Management and Delivery Department. 2020 will always be remembered as an abnormal year with challenging circumstances, but also as a year during which personal development was forced to the next level. Teachers and learners reminded of and proved to us that, that no obstacle should ever stand in our way to success. Together, our learners, Teachers, curriculum heads, heads of high schools and executive heads equally worked very hard to achieve these excellent results. And for that, I would sincerely would like to thank you. Circumstances differ at the different schools, but everybody worked together to prepare our learners for the final grade 12 examination. Parents, thank you very much for your tremendous support during your child's school career and especially during a very challenging 2020. Thank you for being a loyal Kiru parent that we can always rely on. We really value our parents and your child's achievements would never be possible without your support. But today we honor our learners, or rather young adults, who now became past pupils and are ready for the next chapter in their lives. Our grade 12 learners of 2020 had to sacrifice many valuable events and at many more difficult circumstances than previous groups. Thank you for remaining positive and focused towards your main goal, and that was to achieve your best possible grade 12 results. In Kiri, our focus 
is not only to help our learners to achieve excellent academic results, we also do our very best to equip learners with skills that can make them successful in life. We constantly focus on our 21st century and IT skills, which proved to be very valuable during 2020, where teachers and learners had to make use of these skills. We've learned a few lessons during your final year at school. Let's remember some of these lessons. And let's remember the following three. Always supply all the skills you've developed. Communicate and collaborate with others to make life easier for you. And keep your eyes on your goals. Congratulations on your excellent results. The class of 2020 will always be remembered for their guts and glory. You made us all very proud. We're now entering a different world with less protection from your school and less protection of your parents. Grab all the opportunities that come your way, but most of all, enjoy the ride. I would like to leave you with the following words. Push yourself. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Dream it, wish it, and do it. I thank you. Thank you, Andre. So this is my fifth year of being invited to speak at uh, what I say is normally a prestigious gala event honoring the best of the best here at Curo. The highest achievers in basic education, I think not only at the Curo group, by the way, but across the country indeed. And it's always such a thrill for me to be amongst brilliant young minds. There are people who remember a time when life was easier, life was better for them, life was safer and they don't like change. It scares them. It makes them feel like they're outsiders. They are no longer in charge and they're no longer the one thing they've become used to for most of their working life. They are no longer the smartest person in the room. In many cases, to be a talk show host at that age, you would typically have been a CEO, you might have had your hand in business in some form, or a politician, or working behind the scenes as a functionary. You could even be a sports star, or even indeed a teacher. So these are the sort of people who believe they know how the world works, and that's why they have so much to say, because but for the opportunity to be on radio, in normal circumstances, they probably would likely be retired. But why is change scary to them? Well, what it really means is that the baton has passed on, and it's passed on to young people like yourselves. Change means that the world is now in in the hands of people who are unafraid, who are willing to try new things, to take risks, and to change the world, their world. But you know, the one thing about getting old is you don't see it coming. It doesn't announce itself. So I'm 47 years old at uh, this current age, but I don't feel any different from what I was when I was 27. Now, I know many of you watching this will already feel 27 itself was already ancient. Now, what has this got to do with you, class of 2020? Well, you have lived through one of the most confusing and challenging times in memory, really. The COVID-19 pandemic has upended life as we know it in the most unpredictable of ways. And it's not done with us. For most of you, the usual rites of passage as you come to the end of your schooling career were simply things you could not do, certainly not in the normal way. You couldn't perhaps do as many cultural evenings as you might have liked. You couldn't compete on the sporting fields in the ways that you would have liked. Uh, no matric farewells, no matric dances, or if they were, it's just something completely different to what we are used to. 
Even things as simple as debating clubs can't be held in quite the way we normally expect. So none of the things you would normally have had an opportunity to display your excellence in were you given an opportunity to do so. And so like these older people I've been describing, perhaps you too remember a time when things were kinder, when things were easier. And you may also feel in some sense like you're old because you'll be telling people in the future you remember a time when we didn't have to sanitize, when we didn't have to wear masks, when we didn't have to socially distance. So in many ways, you've grown up in ways even a year ago we simply could not have foreseen. I want to caution you not to be angry, not to be like those older talk show hosts I was referring to, whose views of the world are through a lens of negativity, a world in which they see nothing works, nothing is right, and especially everybody in authority is not to be trusted. In my line of work, it's easy to become cynical and jaded. Both as a television journalist, but as a radio talk show host, I'm exposed to the worst of the worst. If there's a corruption story, I know about it. If there's an individual who's stolen money, I know about it. If the amount runs into the millions, I know about it. If the sewage spilling down the streets of some place in South Africa, trust me, I've heard about it. And it's easy when you hear these stories day in and day out to become jaded and cynical. So why do I come here? Why do I come whenever I'm invited by the Curo Group to speak to that particular year's matric learners? I'd like to believe I come because when I come and speak to a room of grade 12 learners, it's almost as if, for me, the world has pressed the reset button. Because you are the ones who are about to embark on your careers. You are the ones who are about to go and face a future that you are one day going to be in charge of and that I believe you are going to make better. What is this future that we face in a time of pandemic? What is this future that we face in a time of uncertainty? I mean, we talk about getting back to normal, but will we really ever get back to normal? When will we stop wearing masks and social distancing? Will we ever really? Maybe none of us can control that. But I'll tell you what you can control. It's the power of hope. It's that sense that if you believe in yourself, if you work hard enough for something, you can achieve it. And if you're watching this broadcast, you already know some of that. Not everybody, perhaps, will be in the seat where you are. Not everybody will have achieved what you have. And so already, just by being part of this process, you know if you believe enough and you work hard enough for something, you can achieve it. It's very simple. We get only one shot in this life. When you leave high school, you really do enter the big league. You enter the grown-up world. And the grown-up world isn't kind. The grown-up world isn't always going to protect you. It's going to offer some knocks. It's going to offer some disappointments. You will get your feelings hurt. You may get thrown off course and take a detour. See, you may, use, you may be used to being special. You may be used to being the top achiever of those around you. That may stop. You may be used to being a big fish in what is relatively a small pond. When you go out into the world, you will soon find it's a big, big world. Many of you will be going to university to pursue your dreams. No doubt you've had conversations with your parents who have said, be careful what you choose to study. Whatever you do, always make sure you have something to fall back on. But guess what? 
Falling back on something means you are going to fall. I want you to think of it not so much as falling back on something, but perhaps as falling forward, because at least then you know what you're going to hit. And talking of hitting, 2020 smacked us right in the face, did it not? Some of us will be watching this and we will know someone who got sick. Some of us will know somebody who went to hospital and perhaps didn't come out. That's what life is all about in the big, big world. It has highs, but it also has lows. It has peaks, but it also has valleys. And here you are today to celebrate some of those peaks, some of those achievements. But in all the years I've addressed learners from Curo, none of them have had to contend with what the class of 2020 has had to deal with. So you've shown you've got the right stuff. You've shown you've got what it takes. But I also want to tell you it's not yet over. If there's one thing you remember from what I say to you today, it's never over. Your best days are still ahead of you. You will go off to university and hopefully you will learn skills for which one day you may be paid handsomely for. But what university, what college will not teach you is your mission. It will not teach you the why. It will not teach you the reason you were put on this earth. That's what you have to figure out in the next few years. Nothing else you do in your life will make sense until you understand why you were put on this earth. You know, in my career, I've met some of the world's most extraordinary people. I've interviewed best-selling authors, prime ministers, presidents. I've interviewed musicians who fill out stadiums. I've interviewed Olympic gold medalists, billion-dollar company entrepreneurs, international people, people who have changed the course of history. I've been lucky to have that job. One of the things I have asked them often is why did they do it? Why did they do what nobody else has done? Why did they do what people said could not, perhaps even should not be done? And almost always the answer is they had to do it. Richard Branson said nothing else would have made sense in his life. Tony Blair told me he had to do it. Nelson Mandela told me if he didn't do it, who would? These were people who felt compelled to act in the way that they did and to then pursue their dreams and their goals. Steve Harvey says, you have to find your gift. And he says, your gift is that thing that you do best with the least amount of effort that thing which you do best with the least amount of effort. He doesn't say it's the thing you don't have to practice. He doesn't say it's the thing that perhaps won't require patience. It will require passion and it will require commitment. Find your gift and then align it with your why. Align it with your purpose with why you believe you were put on this earth. And then you have to remember, not everybody will see it in you. And that's okay, because when somebody says they cannot see anything good in you, if it wasn't the time of COVID, I would say to you, give them a hug and tell them, it's very rough in this world for people who are blind. And now let us meet the top achievers of the class of 2020, all of whom are going to be receiving this trophy in recognition of their incredible achievements in an extraordinary time. The top achievers from Northern Academy for 2020 are 
Grishma George achieved seven A's in English home language, Afrikaans first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, IT, accounting and physical sciences. Grishma achieved 90% or more in five of her subjects, 92% for English home language, 93% for life orientation, 94% for mathematics, 94% for physical sciences and 97% for accounting. Grishma achieved an average of 92.14%. Seni Hamashango Kutame achieved 7 A's in English home language, Afrikaans first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, IT, life sciences and physical sciences. Seni Hamashango achieved 90% or more in one of her subjects, 95% for English home language and an average of 86%. Trifina Lilebukhile Mahasha achieved 6 A's in English home language, Afrikaans first additional language, life orientation, accounting, life sciences and physical sciences. Trifina achieved 90% or more in two of her subjects, 90% for English home language and 92% for accounting achieving an average of 85.71%. Samantha Malega achieved three A's in English home language, mathematics and accounting. Samantha achieved an average of 79.57%. Ule Mashaba achieved six A's in English first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, Geography, Life Sciences and Physical Sciences. Ule achieved 90% or more in two of his subjects, 95% for Physical Sciences and 96% for Mathematics. Ule achieved an average of 87.57%. Mija Tehofato Mashiane achieved five A's in English First Additional Language, Life Orientation, Accounting, business studies and physical sciences. Mitra achieved 90% or more in four of her subjects. She achieved 91% for English first additional language, 96% for life orientation, 98% for accounting and 99% for business studies. Mitra achieved an average of 89.43%. Mampedi Mildred Matladi achieved six A's in Siberi home language, mathematics, accounting, life orientation, geography and physical sciences. Mampedi achieved 90% or more in three of her subjects, 90% for life orientation, 92% for accounting and 93% for mathematics. Mampedi achieved an average of 86.29%. Tebang Motupi achieved six A's in English first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, accounting, geography and physical sciences. Tepang achieved 90% or more in two of his subjects, achieving 90% for both geography and physical sciences. Tepang achieved an average of 85.14%. Biluente Talent Lovo achieved six A's in English home language, mathematics, accounting, life orientation, life sciences and physical sciences. Bilwentle achieved 90% or more in two of her subjects, 90% for accounting and 96% for mathematics. Bilwentle achieved an average of 86.29%. Moloko Pizzi achieved five A's in English home language, Mathematics, Life Orientation, Geography and Life Sciences. Muloko achieved an average of 82.29%. Tabo Rajaji achieved 6 A's in Sibedi Home Language, Mathematics, Life Orientation, IT, Life Sciences and Physical Sciences. Tabo achieved an average of 83.14%. Silo Ramapogo achieved three A's in life orientation, accounting and physical sciences. Silo achieved 90% or more in one of his subjects, 90% for accounting, 
and achieved an average of 79.57%. Buikujo Sikhobela achieved six A's in English Home Language, Mathematics, Life Orientation, IT, Life Sciences and Physical Sciences. Buikujo achieved 90% or more in two of her subjects, 93% for Life Orientation and 96% for Mathematics achieving an average of 87.29%. Pumuzo Humujo Toga achieved six A's in English Home Language, Afrikaans First Additional Language, Life Orientation, IT, Life Sciences and Physical Sciences. Pumuzo achieved an average of 83.71%. Dumishang Kakula achieved five A's in Mathematics, Life Orientation, Accounting, Life Sciences and Physical Sciences. Dumishang achieved 90% or more in one of her subjects, achieving 90% for accounting. Dumishang achieved an average of 82.86%. Dante Tsiamo Nekahane achieved five A's in English Home Language, Afrikaans First Additional Language, Business Studies, CAT and IT. Dante achieved 90% or more in two of his subjects, 90% for business studies and 91% for Afrikaans first additional language. Dante achieved an average of 82%. We congratulate the top achievers from Northern Academy. The Kuro NSC top 10 achievers for 2020 are from the Northern Academy, Seli Hamashango Kutame achieved an overall average of 86% and is number 10 in the country. Seli Hamashango achieved seven A's in English Home Language, Afrikaans First Additional Language, Mathematics, Life Orientation, IT, Life Sciences and Physical Sciences. Seli Hamashango achieved 90% or more in one of her subjects, 95% for English Home Language. From Kuro Academy, Wilke Hevel, Joshua Sigamani achieved an overall average of 86.14% and is number nine in the country. Joshua achieved six A's in Afrikaans first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, geography, life sciences, and physical sciences. Joshua achieved 90% or more in two of his subjects. He achieved 90% for life sciences and 92% for life orientation. From Northern Academy, Mampedi Matladin achieved an overall average of 86.29% and is number seven in the country. Mampedi achieved six A's in Sipedi home language, mathematics, accounting, life orientation, geography, and physical sciences. Mampedi achieved 90% or more in three of her subjects. 90% for life orientation, 92% for accounting, and 93% for mathematics. From Northern Academy, Bilwentle Talent Lovo achieved an overall average of 86.29% and is number seven in the country. Bilwentle achieved six A's in English home language, Mathematics, Accounting, Life Orientation, Life Sciences and Physical Sciences. Bilwente achieved 90% or more in two of her subjects, 90% for Accounting and 96% for Mathematics. From Kuro Academy, Mahikeng, Dibello Forso achieved an overall average of 86.71% and is number six in the country. Dibelo achieved seven A's in English Home Language, Afrikaans First Additional Language, Mathematics, Life Orientation, Accounting, Life Sciences and Physical Sciences. Dibelo achieved 90% or more in two of his subjects. He achieved 90% for Physical Sciences and 91% for Life Orientation. From Meridian Rustenburg. Naledi Mbinga achieved an overall average of 87.14% and is number five in the country. 
the lady achieved seven A's in English home language, Afrikaans first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, geography, life sciences and physical sciences. Naledi achieved 90% or more in one of her subjects. She achieved 90% for life orientation. From Northern Academy, Boikujo Desre Tsekhobela achieved an average of 87.29% and is number four in the country. Boikujo achieved six A's in English home language, mathematics, life orientation, IT, life sciences and physical sciences. Boikuto achieved 90% or more in two of her subjects, 93% for life orientation and 96% for mathematics. Northern Academy, Pule Mashapa, achieved an overall average of 87.57% and is number three in the country. Pule achieved six A's in English first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, geography, life sciences, and physical sciences. Pule achieved 90% or more in two of his subjects, 95% for physical sciences and 96% for mathematics. From Northern Academy, Mija Mashiane achieved an overall average of 89.43% and is number two in the country. Mija achieved five A's in English first additional language, life orientation, accounting, business studies and physical sciences. She achieved 90% or more in four of her subjects, achieving 91% for English first additional language, 96% for life orientation, 98% for accounting and 99% for business studies. From Northern Academy, Grishma George achieved an overall average of 92.14% and is number one in the country. Grishma achieved seven A's in English home language, Afrikaans first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, IT, accounting, and physical sciences. Grishma achieved 90% or more in five of her subjects, 92% for English home language, 93% for life orientation, 94% for mathematics, 94% for physical sciences, and 97% for accounting. We congratulate the Kuro NSC Top 10 Achievers for 2020. Sure, that is a uh, well done, Grishma, Pule, talent, um, and the rest of all the great twelves. I mean, we, as you can see, they're out of the whole country. Not only did we have the top four, but seven out of the top ten came from from this school. Um, yeah, good luck for the other schools. But um, I hope uh, we have a shutout next year. So let's do another ten, um, Jezel. So get your your friends up and running. Um, let's let's do it again. Yeah, um, what can I say? Our learners did extremely well to to come out as as the best in the country. We're talking about thousands of learners that competed just for this part. Never mind the rest of it. Um, we conclude the end of this ceremony. Please feel free. Parents, learners, they, we've got a professional photographer there at the back. Please take photos. We'll make sure you get the photos, family photos, photos with teachers if you want. Um, you guys did extremely well. Um, I said to the, to the George family here, yeah, they are now done with us. I know they came from primary. I had the privilege of teaching both of them. Um, although you achieved almost similar marks, you were two different girls in class, two different people, um, but two wonderful people to, to have in class. And the same, um, a lot of the learners, I was, um, well, fortunate or unfortunate, depending how you see it, for me it was fortunate. With, when lockdown struck and we had to go into smaller classes, I, um, I had to step up and do my part as well. So I was in class for half of the year with a lot of these learners, um, and I, I got to know them very well. So um, it was nice for me. 
It's always nice. Sometimes I sit in my office and I'm a little bit distant, but to be part of the learners every single day and to, to get to know the characters of the learners um, is extremely special. Um, and I know with the teachers, that's, that's what you have. That's what you take, take home at the, day, at the end of the day at night to know the characters, where these learners are. Um, Shifiwa, she's not here with us, but the mother is. Um, I told the mother as well, a very special girl. I spoke to her um, just before the exams. I said, Sir, you know, it, it's difficult because I'm praising, praising myself and I don't want to disappoint myself, but I need to find balance. She found balance. She found the seven A's. Um, it can be done. So thank you very much to everybody involved from, I would say, primary school. I was at the primary school on Thursday and to see, and I, and I visited the classes from grade R, grade one, to see how it's happening. It's a whole process. It's 12 years of schooling that now has come to end for these learners of 2020. But now, as said, they're starting with a new phase of life. It's university, they're all on their own. And you guys are going to have to work on your own now. There's not a, a parent or a teacher that's pulling you or pushing you. It's now on your own. But I know you will be successful. Our learners leave you, and they are extremely successful. Um, so again, parents, congratulations. Learners, teachers, enjoy the day. Please enjoy. There's food available. There's photos. And then one year from now, um, we'll have another meeting like this, and it's going to be even greater. There's tea and coffee um, at the back as well, so um, if, you, if you have time, feel free to mingle, and um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.